from Channel 4's Eyewitness News, this is Breaking News. We're about to listen in to a press conference from Governor John Bell Edwards, where we are expected to get an update on preparations for Cristobal and on the state entering phase two. Listen in. One will follow all the necessary restrictions and precautions uh, to make sure that this step is successful and we can continue to phase through the reopening. Um, in just a moment, we'll get to the latest testing update, uh, but I first want to discuss the tropical weather that we do expect starting this weekend. If you look at the slide, <clears throat> it is Tropical Storm Cristobal. It moved from being a tropical depression to a tropical storm just a short while ago. Uh, it is departing the Yucatan Peninsula. It'll be out over water very shortly, if not already, where it's expected to move almost due north on a straight line for Louisiana. The good news, if we have any today, is the National Weather Service have all but completely ruled out the possibility that it could strengthen beyond a tropical storm and into a category one hurricane. So that's not something we're contemplating. As you may have seen yesterday, I declared a state of emergency for Louisiana uh, because of Cristobal. Later today, I will request a pre-landfall federal emergency declaration from the White House. We are working with uh, FEMA in order to fashion that request. We've also been in contact with all of the parish officials in South Louisiana about the preparations for the past, uh, about their preparations over the past several days. And certainly we stand ready to assist them uh, as they request. Tropical storm and storm surge watches are now in effect for portions of Louisiana. Uh, we continue to believe that the greatest threats will be heavy rainfall and flash flooding, river flooding, um, with minor to moderate coastal flooding as well due to storm surge. Wind impacts will depend upon the exact track intensity and structure of the storm, obviously, um, but it winds up to 60 miles per hour uh, are possible. We do believe, uh, based on current modeling, that uh, tropical storm force winds will extend into central and perhaps north Louisiana as well. In fact, you can kind of look where that S is. That's 7 o'clock Monday morning, and that is a storm uh, that's located over central Louisiana. Average rainfall totals of four to six inches are expected across large portions of the state of Louisiana. Um, but southeast Louisiana on the east side of the storm uh, can expect higher rain totals of six to 10 inches. And what we cannot predict yet, and, and maybe never be able to predict with tremendous accuracy, is the banding effect of, of the storm uh, and if a band settles over a certain area, uh, then that is the, the area that could get up to 10 to 15 inches of rain. And that is what is in the worst case, but reasonable scenario coming from the National Weather Service. And so that is what Southeast Louisiana has to prepare for, is the possibility of 10 to 15 inches of rain falling over a relatively short uh, period of time. One of the good uh, indications are that they have the storm moving north uh, pretty quickly after it makes landfall. You can see that by Tuesday morning, uh, it is at the Arkansas-Missouri line in, in Wisconsin a day later. Uh, because one of the things we don't want to have happen here, as happened in 2016 twice, is to have a storm system that just sits on top of Louisiana and continues to dump rain. The CPRA working with the Corps of Engineers and all of our levy districts uh, and local governments are monitoring 689 gates across coastal Louisiana, including those along the river. Uh, since Wednesday, another 44 gates have been closed, bringing the total of closed gates to 201. They are coordinating with Slipfa East and Slipfa West, Plaquemines Parish, Grand Isle, Lafitte on their flood gate closures uh, in the greater New Orleans area. And we are pre-positioning flood uh, fighting assets, super sacks and sandbags in low-lying areas uh, vulnerable to flooding. It is not too late to get a game plan. So I'm encouraging people if they haven't done so to get a game plan, you can go to getagameplan.org. Uh, DOTD 
would also like to remind motorists to take extra precautions when driving. Uh, avoid getting on the roads uh, once the storm hits until it is passed, unless it is absolutely necessary. If you do need to travel, please check for road closures by going to 511LA.org. It's real-time uh, information about road closures. That's 511LA.org. It will show you whether a road is closed because of maintenance or because of flooding or for any other reason. If you do come upon water in the road when you're driving, if you're not absolutely sure that it is shallow enough and that it is not fast moving enough to cause you a real problem, you should not go through that water. Uh, this is how we see the most fatalities uh, in a typical flood event. Uh, a note on DSNAP, you know, I, I mentioned this the other day, uh, but I want to make sure that uh, I'm clear with the people of Louisiana. Uh, DSNAP has not been authorized to our state, and, and I did say that the other day. Uh, we're not expecting it to be activated because of the storm, but it may be activated later uh, this year. Uh, because of another natural emergency. And by the way, DSNAP is not also, it's not available because of the public health emergency dealing with COVID either. But in the past, people have pre-registered for DSNAP um, and they may believe that they remain pre-registered, but that is not the case because of some changes uh, in hardware and, and so forth uh, on the system. So, so we're encouraging people to go ahead and pre-register for, uh, for DSNAP. If you're currently on uh, SNAP, the SNAP program, you don't need to do this. Uh, but you do have the ability uh, to pre-register. Uh, 